Well, good morning, everyone. My subject, as John said this morning, is work is love made visible. And that's a quote from Khalil Gibran. Khalil, Khalil Gibran is the wonderful poet and mystic. You've probably read his book, The Prophet. And um, I want to speak today um, about what it is to work and serve others with love, you know, with a selfless attitude. You know, we've, we've probably said that line in, in the prayer of St. Francis many times. It is in giving that we receive. And I want to explore that. I want to explore how it is in giving that we receive. It is a truth that as love flows through us, it, it flows to us. As love flows through us, it flows to us. And when we put love into action, when our actions are to lovingly help others, it expands our hearts. It's purifying. It gives our life meaning, and it fills us with that uplifting energy of generosity. Charles Fillmore uh, wrote, Man's consciousness is like a stream flowing through a land. If he, if he dams up the mouth, it settles back into the low places and becomes stagnant. The quick way to purify it is to not only let in the flood from above, but also to open the dam below and to let it flow. Um, I, I shared a little bit about Ram Dass and that song, Love, Serve, and Remember, but I got to meet him, the wonderful spiritual teacher Ram Dass, in Maui. He, he lived in Maui the last years of his life, and one winter I was over there, I think it was 2007, and I was, um, I was invited to go out on a whale boat, a whale boating tour, and, and chant, lead chanting. So we were going to have like a, a sacred chanting whale boating tour. And Ram Das came along. And so I got to meet him and talk to him. And I found out that he received his, his name, Ram Das, from his, his guru, named Karoli Baba. And he told me that Ram Das means servant of God. And I just thought that was so beautiful. And, you know, Ram Das has done so much seva, so much work. He, he started a foundation, the Seva Foundation. Uh, and seva means in Sanskrit to selflessly serve. And part of what the Seva Foundation did was it got doctors together to donate their time to restore eyesight to people that had gone blind due to cataracts. It's a very simple operation. And, but they were the people that couldn't afford the operation. And Ram Dass spoke about the service work of restoring eyesight. He said, how we get rid of blindness, how we get rid of blindness is as important as that we get rid of blindness. He said, how you serve has a lot to do with how much suffering you will relieve. When you help someone, do you see them as a fellow soul? Do you end up graced by their acceptance, by their receiving your help? And I thought about that a lot because I have discovered in my own spiritual journey that it is such a blessing to be of service. It brings such a deep fulfillment and it makes it really makes life meaningful and rich. I'd love to hear your stories. I actually did, um, I got to, to talk to Karen a little bit, Karen Martin, about her, um, her s service work that she does at Bread and Broth and um, that how that inspires her. I think Michael, she said Michael and Cindy and a number of, of, of others also go and serve there. But there, there is a wonderful purifying effect of being an instrument of blessing, no matter how we are an instrument of blessing. After our service today, we're going to have Unity at the Lakes annual meeting, and we hope that you'll join us um, as we take stock of this last year at Unity at the Lake. And we want to honor, especially, we want to honor all the people who've contributed to making this a thriving spiritual community. And so it felt appropriate today when I was, was asking Spirit what to write about, what to speak on today. It felt appropriate to speak on selfless service as such a, a powerful spiritual path and practice. 
Um, in, in Gibran's book, The Prophet, at one point there's a man who asks the prophet, um, he's a plow worker, he's a man that works in the fields, and he asks the prophet to speak of work, to speak on what it is to work. And the prophet answered, and what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. It is to build a house with affection, even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house. It is to sow seeds with tenderness and reap the harvest with joy, even as if your beloved were to eat the fruit. It is to charge all things you fashion, with a breath of your own spirit. <laughs> hmm. Our work is love made visible when we weave into our work the threads of our own heart. Every one of us has unique gifts to give. We each have our own way of putting our own touch of love into what we do. I love weaving threads of my heart into songs, right? Into the songs I sing and into these talks. And this spiritual community, Unity at the Lake, has a lot of weaving, has a lot of weaving going on, a lot of heart threads. And there's so much love made visible that goes into making this a wonderful place where we want to be each Sunday. There's a lot of work actually that goes on behind the scenes. Our council members, our council members put in so much time and love and effort and work. They are love in action. And so are our prayer chaplains, and our music director and administrator, and our web designer, and our YEP, and our, our Zoom tech, and our sound tech, and audio tech, all our volunteer angels. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being love in action. And also, your financial ties to Unity at the Lake, that's also love in action. And together, we co-create this sacred space for the benefit of all. You know, it ripples out all that we contribute here. It ripples out um, often so much farther than we realize. Um, on my daily nature walks, which I take every day, rain or shine here, rain, snow or shine, I, I just marvel. I never cease to stop marveling at the abundance there is in nature, at how nature gives of herself. You know, every day I pass by hundreds of pine cones. I was actually under this one tree yesterday, and I was I was going to count the pine cones, and I think there must have been at least a thousand. <laughs> I stopped counting, <laughs> but it's so amazing to see all the little. Fr you'll see all these little fir trees in a bunch, right? And then you'll see the the mother fir tree that's nearby, or you'll see all these little cedar trees all growing up in a little grove of new cedars, and you'll see the the mature cedar nearby. Um, there's such an abundance of life in nature. It's just everywhere. And Charles Fillmore said, claim God as your inexhaustible source, as your inexhaustible resource, and that all things are yours. We can be, we can be like the birds and the squirrels, you know, and the way they claim those pine cones. They, they trust in the inexhaustible resource. And Fillmore goes on to say that we must give to set up the cycle of flow, of receiving all the abundance there is. He says, remember when you give, say from your heart as you send forth your giving, the love of God through me blesses and multiplies all that I am and all that I give and all that I receive. The love of God through me multiplies and creates abundance. We say that every, every Sunday. So our source gives to us as it gives through us. And so we are, we are most godlike, we are most love-like when we are giving, when we are generous. And the blessings do multiply. You know, I, I, it's, they, they go so much farther than I think we realize a lot of the time. So every spiritual path, every religion, upholds service to others as the highest life. Jesus said, the greatest amongst you is the servant of all. The greatest amongst you is the servant of all. And St. John described how Jesus washed his disciples' feet. 
And then he said, I am your Lord and Master. I have given you an example. I have given you an example. If you know these things, happy are you that do them. I remember um, doing retreats years ago with my partner, and we would we would schedule the retreat so that it, it ended on Easter Sunday. And on that Sunday, we would end the retreat by ceremoniously washing the feet of each retreatant. And it felt so holy. It felt so incredibly heart opening that you know tears just flowed from me and from from everybody. You know. Because it was such a way of honoring and serving the divine in each person. Truly recognizing it is so humbling, <laughs> so beautiful. And this teaching from Jesus is similar to, to a teaching from Alma, the hugging saint. Um, she said, what the world needs are servants, not leaders. Everyone's wish is to become a leader. We have enough leaders who are not real leaders. Let us become real servants instead. That's the only way to become a real leader. I love that. The greatest among you is the servant of all. Now, I've learned um, so much about service through the grace of the spiritual teachers in my life. You know, it's amazing how much you can evolve in one lifetime. Um, I remember, you know, as a teenager, I was just a pretty ordinary teenager. You know, I was a bit self-centered and mostly focused on my needs. You know, I was loving, but I had a lot to learn about, you know, um, about serving others and um, um, thinking beyond my needs, right? And I think, I think the, the most life-changing lessons for me that I received were from touring for years, for 20 years with Alma, you know, and watching her serve day in, day out, and watching everyone around her serve, and just the the, the incredible uh, commitment to selfless service. And I was willing to learn. I was willing to grow more and become more selfless. I remember um, the, the, I remember my, my first trip to India back in 1994. I got to Amas Ashram, which is in South India in Kerala. And when I checked in at the office, they let me know that the room I was to stay in was only a dollar a day. You know, I was going to share it with eight other women. But that I was also expected to do seva, selfless service, for a couple hours a day. And I agreed, and they looked at the list of open jobs and gave me what was available, which was cleaning the, the latrines and bathrooms. <laughs> well, that was quite an initiation, because the bathrooms in India are not like the bathrooms in Macy's. <laughs> it was a huge lesson in getting past aversion, right, in getting to a place which I got to, it took some time, but where I could sincerely feel a satisfaction that I was doing something that would benefit others um, because they had a clean bathroom to go to. And one, one thing that really helped me, I, I saw a poster on the wall of the ashram, and it read, a true spiritual aspirant should be willing to do any kind of work with love, dedicating it to God. I made that my mantra. <laughs> dedicating this work to God, you know, and doing this work with love. I made that my mantra. And so if I were to reword re Gibran's poem, I might, you know, write a new line that said, I clean this bathroom, I clean this toilet <laughs> with love as if my beloved were going to use it, right? And with time, I, I saw it as a spiritual practice, and I got closer to that attitude. And I was happy to be doing something that others would appreciate. And I got past the aversion and uh, finally got, you know, to that place of peace and equanimity. And that seemed to be the lesson because as soon as I got to that peace, I was given a new seva. I was assigned a new job, which was rolling chapatis in the kitchen uh, to serve the thousands of people that came for free dinner each evening. And then sometime after that, I graduated. I finally graduated to the best seva, which was singing two hours a day uh, while Amma was hugging these thousands of people. Um, and what I can say about that seva is that Amma really taught me to put my ego aside and just sing to help people's hearts open. You know, that it, it wasn't about me. It was about 
expressing the in, in enormity of longing and love that I feel for God, for the divine, and just putting that into each note and helping people cry, helping their hearts open, um, and letting go of, you know, being attached to the results of my singing. And so that's been a huge part of my spiritual journey, you know, and learning to serve and to give without conditions, you know, unconditional. And without wanting anything in return except the joy of giving from the heart. There's, there's a really wonderful story I, uh, I recently read in a book from James Odea um, called The Shadow Saint. Once there was a good man, a holy man, and he was so devoted to Krishna, Krishna being a god in Hinduism. And this man kept Krishna in his heart and in his mind constantly. And he would pray, and he would pray, Oh, Krishna, you are the deep mystery. You are the very essence of love and compassion. You dissolve all sacred, you dis I'm sorry, you dissolve all hatred and awaken the soul to ecstatic union with your being. Bring me into your presence. Let me know mystical union with your divine light. And this was his prayer. This was his prayer day and night as he was deeply absorbed in prayer. And finally, one evening, as he was so deep in this prayer for union, he felt as if a million golden threads of light entered his heart and it just expanded his heart into infinity. And he experienced samadhi. He experienced union and oneness with Krishna, with God. And there wasn't even an ounce of feeling separate. And then Krishna spoke to him and said, My dear, my dear beloved, now that you behold me, how can I serve you? And the holy man answered, Krishna, I only ask that I may never lose sight of you, that I may always feel this oneness. And Krishna replied, So shall it be. Now tell me two other things your heart desires. And the man replied, I desire nothing but to see you always the essence of my very soul. And Krishna responded, I lovingly command you to wish for two more things. And so the holy man said, then I desire as I face you, the sun of suns, that the shadow falling behind me be so filled with your grace that it heals all hurts and wounds, all sickness and grief for anyone it touches. Ah, that is so beautiful, Krishna said. Anyone touched by your shadow will be healed. And now what is your last wish? And the man replied, mm, My wish is that I never see or know where my shadow falls or who it heals, for that would separate me from knowing that my shadow comes from your light, from your light. And Krishna said, So shall it be, my beautiful shadow saint. You will serve without any attachment to results. And so this holy man had reached the highest state of freedom. And he would never lose his state of oneness because he would never claim the healing that happened from his shadow as his own work. He knew it was God healing through him. It was love flowing through him. And to think otherwise would actually create separation. So it takes spiritual maturity to just want to bless without needing attention for, for what we give or how we give. And, of course, we love appreciation. You know, it's encouraging. Sometimes we need the encouragement of, of appreciation and gratitude. It often keeps us going. And as we grow, you know, it's important we receive thanks and gratitude so that we can feel confident in what we're doing. But I think we can get to a place... Um, where our giving is most beautiful and most pure when we're not attached to the results of the actions. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, do your best and leave the results to God. Do your best and leave the results to God. I love that. That's another really great mantra. It's like that beautiful teaching from Jesus in John 5.30. I can of myself do nothing. I seek to do not my will but the will of him who sent me. You know, I remember sometimes 
when I would be singing for Alma, uh, she would do little things to just to see how much ego I had in it. You know, sometimes she'd ask the sound person to just turn the volume down. <laughs> sometimes she'd, she'd send someone to ask me to, you know, quit my set early. And in those early days, you know, I would notice my ego got ruffled by that. And my mind would, would start this story, well, that's fine, you know, I, I can just go somewhere else where I'm appreciated and where I get paid to sing. <laughs> but as I grew, I realized that there was a deep teaching for me in that, and that was that teaching of non-attachment to, to my actions, you know, to just put the love in action and not be attached to it. And that it, it wasn't about me, it was how blessings could come from the divine through me, and not to claim it not to claim it and not to put conditions on it, the blessings that could come through. And so as my attitude shifted, you know, through the years into this more selfless way of singing and serving, you know, those incidents of turning the volume down or asking me to stop early, they stopped happening. You know, they were really a test for me to see how much ego was in my serving and to learn to serve more selflessly, truly. And, the, you know, the lessons were hard at times, you know. I had a good, tough teacher, <laughs> but really powerful for me to gain. And I'm so grateful. I am so grateful for that, those teachings and training. So uh, before I close, you know, I just want to say that this, this path of serving others, you know, it's, it's also called karma yoga um, in the yogic tradition. It is a way that we can always feel God's presence. You know, as we put love into action, we receive love. Our hearts expand and we shine with Spirit's presence. And I know you know this. <laughs> and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the ways you give your gifts to the world. I'd actually love to hear um, about your experiences. I know there, that you have some great stories to share. I've been here, I think, five and a half months it's been. And I've already witnessed so much selfless giving and generosity of spirit and for those of you who are looking for ways to serve more we so welcome you to do so you know we're grateful for however you feel to put the love you are into action as as jesus said give and it shall be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. So let us open the river. Let us open the river of our hearts, the waterfall of our hearts, and let love flow through us and to us in myriad ways, blessing this world with the gifts that only we can give, that only we can give. May we love, may we serve, and may we remember the divine essence of who we are in every moment. Thank you all. God bless. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>